Item Number SCP-446 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-446 is to be kept locked in its case and only removed for testing. Any clothing and accessories must be removed from SCP-446 when not in use. See Incident 446-A. SCP-446, in its normal state, appears to be a Caucasian female, early twenties, brown hair, 17.78 cm at its longest point, unusually bright blue eyes. Light skin with a tattoo of the Marshall Carter and Dark logo on its lower back, 1.75 meters tall and weighing 52.16 kilograms. SCP-446 is anatomically correct, at least on the outside. All physical characteristics are consistent with a living human, including skin tone and texture, eye color and clarity of the sclera, even body heat. SCP-446 does not respond to any communication, however and also does not breathe or exhibit a pulse. SCP-446 is normally stored lying on its back inside a long aluminum box with a hinged lid. SCP-446 and its storage box were discovered in by agents and The storage box itself is unremarkable, aside from a plain white label listing SCP-446's clothing sizes. When the agents attempted to lift SCP-446 by the shoulders into a sitting position, SCP-446 responded to their touch by sitting upright on its own. A gentle push on its shoulders from the front encourages it to lie back down. Further coaxing can compel SCP-446 to stand up on its own, and it will remain standing until downward pressure is applied to the top of its head, encouraging SCP-446 to sit again. SCP-446 generally does not move without prompting of some kind, although its eyes will follow the nearest person, and it will make eye contact if possible. Moving and posing of SCP-446's limbs is also possible. Once moved into position, they will hold the established pose indefinitely. This works even in cases where delicate balancing would be required for a person, such as standing on one foot or even one hand. Attempts to push SCP-446 over have exactly the expected effect. It makes no attempt to preserve its balance and simply falls over. A medical examination of SCP-446 revealed additional information. See Document 446-1A for details. Incident 446-1 SCP involved SCP-446 Personnel involved Guard Dr. Sunderland Date September 2, 2010 Location: Storage Room 6 Site Description In the spirit of modesty, SCP-446 was initially stored clothes in a standard Class D personnel uniform. A guard later investigated reports of a thumping noise in Storage Room 6, where SCP-446 is kept. SCP-446's case was found to have moved several inches from its normal resting place as a result of rhythmic blows to the lid from the inside. Dr. Sunderland was called in, and upon opening the case, found that SCP-446 was attempting to rise to a sitting pose. It would bang its head against the lid, lie back down, and attempt to sit up again. Once the lid was opened, SCP-446 stood on its own without coaxing. SCP-446 then put its hands together at the wrist, lowered its head, and hunched its shoulders. SCP-446 also changed its expression for the first time since entering Foundation control. Its face took on a subtle mixture of sadness and fear. It held this pose until Dr. Sunderland touched its shoulder, which prompted SCP-446 to return to a normal standing position, expressionless. However, SCP-446 could not be induced to lie down until the Class D uniform was removed. Document 446-1A Medical examination of SCP-446, conducted by Dr. Subject is female. Physical characteristics noted as being consistent with the description in the primary SCP documentation. The subject is nude and reclined on a table. Also as noted in the documentation, the subject's eyes follow me as I move about the examination room. Although it is unclear whether or not the subject is alive given the lack of respiratory and cardiopulmonary functions, 
This examination will be conducted in the manner of an autopsy, in order to gain as much insight as possible, insofar as the subject is not significantly damaged. The body is warm to the touch. There is no sign of rigor mortis or liver mortis. The neck, torso, and extremities show no signs of injury or trauma. The skin is smooth and undamaged. A particular note is the clarity of the facial skin. There are no blemishes nor any sign of past injury. The scalp hair is brown and the hair color is natural and uniform throughout. Moving on to the eyes, the irises are blue and the pupils are equal, measuring 0.5 cm in diameter. It should be noted that the pupil's size is constant regardless of light intensity, and the subject does not blink even when the surface of the eye is touched. The cornea are clear, and there are no signs of petechia in the sclerae or conjunctivae. Examination of the mouth by pen light reveals a blockage at the top of the throat. The opening is completely covered by a metal plate that appears to be bonded to the sides all the way around. It shifts slightly when pushed but does not dislodge. Similar blockages are observed in the ear canals, nostrils, genitalia, and anus. Now, on to the internal examination. X-rays previously taken of the subject show a number of irregularly shaped masses throughout the body. Among these are the orifices blockages noted above. The brain, heart, liver, and kidneys are also obscured by additional masses. Before attempting the Y incision, I elected to excise a 1 cm square of skin from the subject's left flank. Examination of the tissue under a microscope shows nothing out of the ordinary. However, observation of the wound shows that scab tissue is visibly forming already, less than a minute after the excision. Within five minutes, the wound is healed and there is no scarring whatsoever. Given the rapid healing of tissue damage, the internal examination had to be quick by necessity. I hesitate to repeat the Y incision in order to examine a subject more thoroughly, at least for now. As I completed the incision, I saw the subject's lips moving silently as she continued to stare at me. We should avoid the possibility of irreparable damage until we know more about its behavior or until we have located a second specimen. During the brief internal examination, I observed that the masses on the X-ray appear to be boxes made of the same metal as the blockages. They are connected to each other and to other unobstructed organs by an assortment of wires and hoses. The boxes themselves appear to be seamless and were not noticeably damaged by my scalpel or bone saw. The wire and hose connections are flush to the boxes and have no obvious means of removal. At this point the Y incision was slowly closing as it healed. I removed the clamps and watched as the incision healed fully in just over 11 minutes with no visible scarring. The subject's lips stopped moving shortly before the wound closed completely. Unfortunately, it seems that this examination has produced more questions than answers. The movement of the eyes and mouth during the examination suggests that a degree of sapience may be retained by the subject. However, there is no concrete evidence. I can speculate that the organ boxes may be preserving the body and governing its limited and peculiar functions, but there is also little evidence to confirm this. These questions will likely remain unanswered until I can conduct a more thorough internal examination.